Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, welcome to story time. And this morning we will be reading Fairy Tale News by Colin and Jackie Hawkins, published by Candlewick Press. Once upon a time, in an old tumble down cottage on the edge of Tanglewood, lived Mother Hubbard with her son Jack. One morning, Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard, but the cupboard was bare. What shall we do? she cried. We have no food, no money. Jack, you'll have to find a job or we'll starve. So Jack scooted off into town. He looked all over for work. He tried porkers, the butchers. Sorry, Jack. Then he tried wax and wane. Sorry, Jack. And then he tried the pat cake bakery. Sorry, Jack. Poor Jack couldn't get a job anywhere. Just then he saw a sign in the Tittle Tattle News Shop window saying, Paper boy or girl wanted. Apply within. So in Jack rushed. Mrs. Tattle was delighted. The job's yours, she said, and she gave Jack a big bag of the fairy tale news to deliver. Jack scurried off happily. I'm going to be the best paper boy ever, he said. Jack's first delivery was to the home of the three bears who lived at Honey Cottage on Hickory Lane. Inside Honey Cottage, the three bears were about to have breakfast when Jack slid the newspaper through the mail slot. Mr. Bear picked up the paper and sat down at the kitchen table. What's for breakfast, Mom? asked Baby Bear. Well, it's your favorite, said Mrs. Bear. Porridge! Oh, one of the little pig's houses has been blown down. Oh dear, that's the last straw. Mr. Bear put down his paper and they all began to eat their porridge, but it was much too hot. Never mind, said Mrs. Bear. Let's all go for a walk while it cools down. So leaving the hot porridge to cool, the three bears set off for a walk in the woods. They had not been gone two minutes when the door of the cottage opened and in came Goldilocks. Goldilocks was a very naughty little girl. First, she jumped on Mr. Bear's big chair. Ouch! Too hard! Next, she jumped on Mrs. Bear's middle-sized chair. Ugh! Too soft. Then she jumped on Baby Bear's little chair and broke it. Oops. Then Goldilocks spotted the bear's breakfast on the table. First, she tried some of Mr. Bear's porridge. Yuck! Too salty. Next, she tried Mrs. Bear's porridge. Ugh! Too sweet. Then she tried Baby Bear's and gobbled it all up. Yummy! Perfect. All the porridge tasting had made Goldilocks feel so sleepy, so she went upstairs to have a nap. First, she got into Mr. Bear's big bed. Ouch! Too lumpy! Next, she got into Mrs. Bear's middle-sized bed. Ugh, too squishy. Finally, she snuggled into Baby Bear's little bed. Perfect, said Goldilocks, and she instantly fell into a deep, deep sleep. Meanwhile, further up the road, Jack delivered a copy of Fairy Tale News to Woodbine Cottage. This was the cozy home of Mr. and Mrs. Hood and their daughter, Red Riding Hood. While Mr. Hood read the latest sports news, Mrs. Hood handed a breakfast, a basket to Red Riding Hood. It was filled with fruitcake, chocolate chip cookies, and a copy of Knitter's Weekly. Take this to your granny, dear, she said. She's not very well, and this will cheer her up. Okay, Mom, said Red Riding Hood, and off she went. Tell your grand to knit us some red socks. Be careful and don't dawdle in the woods. Okay, Mom. A short time later, deep in Tangled Woods, the bears met Red Riding Hood, snacking from her basket. Hello, bears, she said, still munching. I'm off to see my granny. She isn't very well. Oh, dear, said Mrs. Bear. Give her our love. And they waved goodbye. However, no one noticed that hiding behind the bushes, Big Bad Wolf had heard every word. A few minutes later, Big Bad Wolf met Jack on his 
paper rounds. Howdy, Jack, said Big Bad Wolf. I'm off to visit Granny Hood. She's not feeling too good. Give me her newspaper and I'll take it for you. It's on my way. How kind. Okay, thanks, said Jack, and, scoot and off he scooted. Moments later, Big Bad Wolf knocked on the door of Granny's cottage. Who's there? said Granny in a small, shaky voice. It's the paper boy, Big Bad Wolf fibbed. I've got your fairy tale news. No sooner had Granny opened the door than the Big Bad Wolf leaped inside and shoved poor Granny in a closet. Then Big Bad Wolf put on Granny's spare bloomers and nightgown and hopped into her bed. Big Bad Wolf made himself very comfy and settled down to read Granny's copy of the fairy tale news while he waited for Little Riding Hood. It wasn't very long before Red Riding Hood arrived at Granny's cottage and knocked on the door. Come in, my dear. When she went inside, she saw a big pair of hairy ears poking over the top of the newspaper. Oh, what big hairy ears you have, Granny, said Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with, my dear, growled the Big Bad Wolf. Red Riding Hood stared into Big Bad Wolf's huge eyes, gleaming behind Granny's spectacles. Oh, what big eyes you have, Granny, she said. All the better to see you with, my dear, growled the Big Bad Wolf licking his lips. And, oh, what big teeth you have, Granny, said Red Riding Hood in a very wobbly voice. All the better to eat you with, roared Big Bad Wolf. Suddenly, the door crashed open. There, filling the doorway, was Mr. Hood. He'd come over to bring Granny some wood for her fire. Hey, what's going on here? He roared as he swung his big axe. Big Bad Wolf leapt straight out of the window and ran off into the woods. As he ran, he passed Jack, who was very surprised to see the Big Bad Wolf in Granny's clothing. Meanwhile, after their long walk, the bears arrived back at Honey Cottage to discover all was not as it should be. Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge. And someone's been eating my porridge and is eating it all up. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sitting in my chair. And someone's been sitting in my chair and broken it. <laughs> and what's that noise? said Mr. Bear. Sounds like someone snoring, said Mrs. Bear. And they all dashed upstairs to the bedroom. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. And someone's been sleeping in my bed and is still in it. All this roaring and growling woke Goldilocks. Eek! She screamed and leapt off the bed and ran off. Not far away, Jack was delivering his last copy of Fairy Tale News to his mom. As Mrs. Hubbard read the market news in the paper, she said, Look, Jack, cows are selling well. Why don't you take Daisy to town and try to get a good price for her? So Jack set off for the market with Daisy. Along the way, they met a fast-talking stranger who said, I'll give you this magic bean for your fine cow, here and now. What do you say? Okay, done, said Jack. He took the magic bean and the fast-talking stranger took Daisy. When Jack got home, he gave his mom the magic bean. She was furious. You stupid boy, she roared. You've been had, but, but it's a magic bean, mom. Magic bean? I'll give you magic bean, Jack, she said Jack's mom, throwing the bean out the window. Look, it's disappeared. The next morning, as Jack arrived back at Tumbledown Cottage after his paper rounds, he saw an enormous beanstalk growing out of the garden. Wow, said Jack. That was a magic bean. Be careful, called his mom as Jack began to climb the beanstalk. Higher and higher he went until, eventually, he reached the top, where he found a huge castle. Inside the castle lived a giant, who, to Jack's horror, suddenly appeared, shouting, fee fi fo fum Jack was so scared that he ran away to hide, but as he did so, he dropped his mom's newspaper. 
What's this? The giant said the giant as he bent down and picked up the newspaper. He'd never seen the fairy tale news before. Once he started reading, he became totally absorbed in all the news. He was so fascinated that he didn't even notice Jack stealing away with his magic harp. The next day, Jack climbed the beanstalk again, carrying another copy of the fairy tale news. Again, the giant appeared, shouting, Fee, fi, fo, fum! This time, however, as Jack ran away, he dropped the newspaper on purpose. Again, the giant picked it up, and again, he didn't notice when Jack sneaked off with his hen that laid golden eggs. The following day, up Jack climbed again. This time, however, when the giant appeared shouting, Fee, fi, fo, fum! He didn't stop to read the fairy tale news, but chased Jack and caught him. Gotcha! boomed the giant at the terrified Jack. You're the one who's been stealing my stuff, so I'm going to eat you up. Unless you promise you'll climb up here every day with a copy of the fairy tale news. What do you say? Jack agreed and was good on his word. Every morning, he climbed the beanstalk with a newspaper for the giant, who always gave Jack a golden coin and a cup of juice. Big bad wolf is in trouble again. Eh, it'll blow over. Jack and his mom became very rich, but Jack still delivered the fairy tale news to Beanstalk Castle, as so he so enjoyed going to see his best friend, the giant. And of course, they all lived happily ever after. The end. And just so happens, I have a copy of the fairy tale news right here. <clears throat> Nabbed. Big Bad Wolf arrested in nightgown. Goldie shocks. The three bears report that porridge was eaten and a chair was broken in the cottage while they were out on the morning walk. Mr. Bear believes the culprit to be a golden-haired girl he found in Baby Bear's bed. However, she screamed loudly and ran off into the woods before he could question her about the damage. Mr. Bear has said he will never leave his porridge to cool on the table again, and that he is looking for a good carpenter. I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and I will see you next week for Royal Readers. Bye.